Hey everybody, it's Kimberly, and I haven't um, posted since the election, and I just wanted to um, answer question a question or two that I've been being asked a lot since um, President-elect Trump was elected, and that question is, you know, what do I think and how do I feel? And um, the way I look at it is, as a woman of color in the United States of America, this isn't my first rodeo. This isn't the first administration or president under which I felt like maybe they don't see me. Maybe I'm. Maybe they don't really see who I am. Maybe I'm not acknowledged. And I kind of have a little perspective that this isn't the end of the world, that um, this isn't the first time that we've had something going on that doesn't seem fair or doesn't seem right, and that we all have to um, accept the invitation. This is an invitation. This is actually an incredibly exciting time. I personally, I'm so excited because the conversation is now on the table. It was under the table. All this stuff has been going on all this time. Um, all these ideas that President-elect Trump, because he's so unfiltered, he just says whatever comes into his head. It's not like these are suddenly issues. These are things that we as a nation have been not talking about since we have become a nation. This is a nation that was founded um, by taking land from indigenous people and in order to become uh, you know, a financial superpower, we um, shipped in free forced labor and we've never dealt with it. These are conversations that have never taken place and I personally am so excited because I really think we are going to have to talk about stuff because now not just indigenous or uh, people of color or people who for whatever reason are marginalized are affected. Now nice white people are starting to get worried and upset and anxious and feel like, whoa, wait a minute. You know, who are these people that elected President-elect Trump and I don't feel comfortable here and maybe, you know, maybe I'm not in the country I thought I was in. And all I really have to say about that is that the country hasn't changed. It's just that now the conversation is taking place out in the open where we can make um, a conscious choice about what kind of citizens we want to be. And for me, I'm really... I'm taking this as an invitation to create my own mission statement as a conscious citizen of the United States of America. And from that viewpoint, you know, I really think each of us, if we made a mission statement to be conscious citizens of our country, each of us would choose completely different ways of expressing our citizenship. And I think that's perfect. I think that's exactly how it should be. What I would spend my time doing might be completely different than someone else. And the only other thing I want to say is the morning after the election, I had a chance to talk with a friend of mine. And she said to me, she goes, you know, if um, Secretary Clinton had been elected last night, the first thing I would have done this morning is called my hairstylist to talk about what color she thinks I should dye my hair. And she goes, because Secretary Clinton didn't win, now I'm having conversations about what am I going to plan to do with my time so that I can really support my country in becoming the country I want it to be. And although, you know, I wish it were happening under um, uh, maybe less anxiety producing circumstances, you know, as Tina Turner would say, sometimes we just got to do it rough. You know, I don't know why that is, but we humans just got to do it rough. Um, and before I click off, I just want to read a couple paragraphs from a poem written by Langston Hughes in 1938. Now this goes back to what I was saying about this is not our first rodeo. So 
we have been here before and we are going to make it through and we're going to do it by supporting each other and by each of us deciding that we have a vision for this amazing experiment called democracy that if we each decide to live into the vision we have chosen it's going to blow our minds we are going to we are going to find ourselves in a completely new atmosphere here so let me just quickly read just a excerpts not the whole thing from a Langston Hughes poem I might post the whole poem so you can read it because it's it's pretty amazing um, when you realize it was in 1938 that he wrote this and how much it applies to our situation today the poem is called let America be America again which sounds kind of like president-elect Trump's um, campaign slogan but let's see what Langston Hughes has to say about that and this is just excerpts I'm not reading the whole thing he says oh let America be America again the land that never has been yet and yet must be the land where every man and woman is free the land that's mine the poor man's Indians Negroes me who made America whose sweat and blood whose faith and pain whose hand at the foundry whose plow in the rain must bring back our mighty dream again oh yes I say it plain America never was America to me and yet I swear this oath America will be peace love blessings I'll see you around campus when you see me let's talk love you bye